Welcome to r slash ask reddit where we answer your most burning questions. Our next ask reddit question is what's the worst thing that you've seen a coworker do and still avoid being fired? Our first reply is from not a throwaway or is we had a boss storing pictures of himself in only his wide open bathrobe on company servers. It was reported to HR but he wasn't fired for it. Later, he was arrested as part of an undercover sting where he thought he was meeting a 15 year old girl about 500 miles away. And then, after OP got a lot of questions, he added some details. The images were stored in a shared folder used by a few employees. The guy was our IT manager so he should have known better than storing them there. I'm assuming the pictures were taken using a work camera because digital cameras were very expensive at that time and the company had a few. Before he left for the weekend to meet the girl, he had asked to use the digital camcorder I had for work. He told me he needed it to make a video of his home possessions for insurance purposes. But I was suspicious of that so I told him I needed it for work. We found out he was arrested when he called the computer room collect from jail. This was later in the evening when he had no showed for the work that day. We didn't accept the charges, but called back later to see what he was charged with. At the time, we were told it was solicitation of a minor, but the whole details came out later when he was on the local news station. Our next reply is from Bingo. An HR rep found out about a person's elective surgery and made fun of her with a former employee. Let me recap. This person knew about an employee's private medical information because she worked with our healthcare plan in her role as HR and shared that private information with another person for the sole purpose of mocking the employee. She was not fired. And then Darkest Hour says exactly what I was thinking. That's not just worthy of being fired, that's 100% illegal. Our next reply is from Cameo. I know someone who managed to close an entire supermarket early for the first time in its history, costing the company several thousands of pounds. Because they tried to set a clock on a computer back an hour to avoid missing some deadline for a daily routine. He said it seemed like a good idea at the time. And then Cow Tools replies to that. <laughs> that reminds me of a guy that was brought into my store to train as a manager. He used to try to flirt with me by bragging about the amount of drugs he did. Anyways, when he was eventually made manager of one of our chain's biggest stores, he closed it two hours early. Apparently, he had other things to do. He just sent all the employees home, kicked out the customers, and locked up. However, he was most definitely fired after that. Our next reply is from not so tiny URL. My worst coworker ever was a credit mooch. He would constantly horn in on other people's projects, getting his name added to them to make it look like he was doing stuff when he actually wasn't. If people tried to assign him any work on said project, he would have a personal emergency, or a virus would make him lose all his work, or his schedule is booked with other projects, or the worst, he would pull some sucker in to help him with it and said sucker would end up doing it all in utter frustration. Because he was so good at stealing credit, he managed to get top marked in his reviews despite doing absolutely zero actual work for the company. I know at least four people quit due to this guy getting better raises than they did. Far as I know, they never actually got rid of him. Honestly, I'm not surprised that this guy was never fired. He sounds like every other ladder climbing middle manager on planet Earth. Our next reply is from Sleestack. A guy at my wife's old job was brought in because he was really good at selling the services they provided. He proceeded to send dick pics to the women at work and solicit nudes from them. The women said stop or they'd take it up with management and it subsided some. He solicited nudes from a nude chick who asked my wife about it and my wife went to management with everything and said this guy's out or I'm quitting. Well, she quit. The guy's still there, but most of the original female staff has quit. Our next reply is from Deleted. I was an assistant manager at a Valvoline instant oil change. I was dealing with an unreasonable customer that had just spit at a female employee that he didn't want working on his car. He didn't know that the guy under his car was her boyfriend. The guy comes up the steps, grabs an oil gun, and starts pumping 10W30 all climate into the guy's window as he's frantically trying to start the car and roll up the window. The employee was reprimanded pretty hard, but it was understood why he did it. No charges were filed, and the franchise owner paid a lot of money to have the guy's car cleaned. Obviously, I never saw him again. Our next reply is from the Wretched Divine. Not me, but my wife. She had a coworker that literally punched a customer, but wasn't fired. 
He later got into a physical altercation with another coworker, wasn't fired. Then he wrapped my wife's hair around her throat and play choked her, still wasn't fired. Finally, he got into yet another altercation with a coworker and pulled a gun on him, all while on the clock. Then he was fired. Our next reply is from a soft seven. A guy at the plant I worked at scrapped $360,000 in airplane parts because he didn't even bother to look at the work instructions. He just drives a forklift now. Our next Ask Reddit question is, men of Reddit, what's your creepy girl story? Our first reply is from Wonder Never. I once had an acquaintance add me on Facebook. When I clicked on her profile, it said she was in a relationship with someone. That someone was a fake account of me with my picture. And to that, Otter House replies, How do you know you weren't the fake and she was with the original? Our next reply is from Yonkin. I met a girl online. She seemed normal enough, so we ended up going out for a drink. I found out that night that she actually lived an hour away in a rural town, but whatever. Well, we went out, had a drink, then went to go play pool. We drove over in my vehicle, and when we got to the pool hall, she checked her phone and saw that she had a text from her ex-boyfriend. She proceeded to cry incessantly. I was trapped. I didn't know what to do. So I offered to take her back to her car. She said she wasn't sure if she could drive and she asked if I would take her home. I declined saying it wouldn't be a good idea because A. Her car was like a mile away. B. She lived an hour away. C. How in the hell did she plan to get to her car the next day? So she agrees for the night to end, all the while apologizing vigorously. The next day she texts me, apologizes, and offers to buy me lunch. She seemed alright when we were getting to know each other, and I was bored, so I figured what the hell and gave her another shot. She brought her kids to the lunch. When I saw them get out of the car, I texted her and said that it wasn't okay for me to meet them. She became irate and said her sitter canceled at the last minute. Even though the drive was an hour long from her house, she didn't find it important to ask if it would be weird for her kids to come. It was at this point that I stated I was no longer interested. Now for the creepy part. Two days later she texted me, but I didn't respond. She kept at it and kept asking if I wanted to go out for the next weekend. After multiple texts, I messaged her and said that I wasn't interested and I had plans to take my friend out for her birthday. This resulted in even more irate messages about how she wasn't comfortable with me going out with other girls, and so forth. This resulted in her getting blocked. Turns out, she took a guess on where we would go since there's only one nightclub in town, and she showed up. I had to tell the birthday girl that I was leaving and to call me when she was ready to go. My night was ruined. Birthday girl got home okay in case you were wondering. But wait, there's more. A couple of weeks after that, there was an ice storm and power had gone out in the area. I ended up going over to a friend's house to hang out since they had a generator. We were playing cards and enjoying ourselves. Suddenly, I get a text from a number I didn't recognize. Are you alright? I'm really worried, the message read. I'm fine. Who is this? I replied. It's the creepy girl, she responded. I ignored it and put my phone down. The next message sent chills down my spine. I'm really worried. I'm standing outside your house and all the lights are off. Are you sure you're okay? She had never been to my house and I had never given her my last name. My final message before blocking her involved not contacting me or I'd call the police. It turns out she was a secretary or something for a police department and she ran my tag and found out where I lived. Drove over an hour to my house in the midst of an ice storm. Then got a new number also she could check up on me. That sounds like something she definitely can and should be fired for. Our next reply is from Scotty Sterling. I was in New Orleans watching some street performers go crazy and a mom came up behind me and fully grabbed both of my butt cheeks. I was 18 and standing next to both of my parents and she said, Hey, you remind me of my son. Which is probably one of the weirdest things to say in that moment. And incredibly, we have a similar story from Golden Fox. I didn't think I had a story for this thread, but yours reminded me of one. I was at a bar in Savannah, Georgia with some friends. We met this older couple and started talking to them. They were a Canadian couple that met later in life and were road tripping around the US. The wife said that I reminded her of her son, who years prior had died tragically at about my age. 
In the same breath, she confided that if her husband wasn't there, she'd take me somewhere and passionately hug my brains out. Obviously, I thought that was pretty alarming. The passionate hugging was decent though. Our next reply is from Solo Inver. She befriended my younger sister just to get my sister to ask her to a sleepover. I woke up in the middle of the night with her laying in bed with me. I was 17 years old, she was 13. And then there's a reply from Throwaway Yufa. I know the majority of abuse happens when men assault young women, but people like to pretend that young girls don't have sexual motive or agency. I cringe when I think of the sexy things I used to do at 13 to get a guy's attention. I had a crush on my dad's friend's son. He was 16 or 17. I'd do the whole lean over with a low cut top thing. I'd brush my butt against him in the hallway. One time, I just effing ran and tackled him over the couch. I was going to play it off as play wrestling. The worst I ever witnessed was at a barbecue party that one of my girlfriend's parents had. We were about 15 at the time and one of our friends decided to unilaterally sit in the lap of this boy. He looked pretty cool with it and it only raised a few eyebrows but she kept sitting there, talking to him with her back turned. Weird. And the kitchen slowly cleared out. It was just me, the girls whose parents were hosting the party, and the guy and our girlfriend on his lap. She started grinding on him so hard that people from the patio could see. And he just had his hands out wide like, I'm not doing anything. The poor guy was like 18 or 19 and obviously shy around girls because he didn't know how to say no. Our next reply is from Coach Allison, a girl in my dorm. She had a crush on my roommate. My roommate clearly didn't like her and told her several times. Things got out of hand and there were times where my roommate would come running back to the room yelling, lock the door, lock the door. And moments later, the girl and her friend would try to come barge in without permission. What's creepy is this next part. Apparently, one night we accidentally left our room unlocked and she decided to sneak in and play with and rub our heads. We didn't wake up, but her roommate told us what she did a couple of days later. I haven't seen her in about a year and I'm quite glad. Well, the reason why you haven't seen her in a year is probably because she learned to rub your heads much softer now. Our next reply is from 4th Middle Spooler. This younger girl who I'd never spoken to once in high school had a crush on me. I got a note from her in my locker asking if I wanted to go out with her. I had no idea of how to get it back to her, so I just wrote no and taped it to my locker. Then she started following me everywhere. I, <laughs> I would try to talk to her, but she would just keep walking away, pretending I wasn't talking to her. This goes on for like two years. Then I was hanging out by myself one day around the neighborhood and she comes walking up with three guys who wanted to kick my butt for some dumb unrelated stuff. She somehow found out about it and brought them over to me. After an embarrassing scene with me diffusing the situation with these angry gentlemen, they leave. And she finally sits down on the curb right next to me and starts flirting. All I could do was just stare at her enormous bangs with a WTF expression until she got embarrassed and left. Our next reply is from Forethought. I was bored once at a small local festival and didn't want to be there, so I just got a drink and started walking around aimlessly when I noticed a fire breather. The display was interesting and she was pretty hot. When she was on break, she went to get a drink and we started talking. She seemed nice. We had a laugh but her break was up and she resumed her display. So I left her to it and continued to wander around. Five minutes later, security was called to her display. Turns out, some crazy girl whom I never met before was following me around the festival and assaulted the fire breather. She had claimed that she and I were together and that fire breather was trying to break us up. So you could say this is a story about two old flames. Our next reply is from Quats. I'm not a guy myself, but one I dated had a couple of fun stories. One was a girl he got set up with by friends on a blind date. As they went out to dinner, they passed a jewelry store and she insisted on going in so they could pick out rings for when they got engaged. He paid for dinner and noped right out. The second one went better until he took her back to her place, where she went to the kitchen and pulled a nice, big, sharp chef's knife and told him he was staying the night. He said, I did what any red-blooded American male would do. I agreed, but said I needed to go to the bathroom where I promptly crawled out the window and never saw her again. Our next reply is from my seldom wipe. I was at a friend's birthday party for her dog. Probably was just an excuse to have people over and get drunk. And another friend, let's call her M, is also there. I'd known M for a couple of years, but I only really ever see her a couple of times a year. She's very drunk and also very married. 
Her husband was also at the same party. At one point in the night, she asked me if I have a girlfriend. I didn't. If I'm looking for a girlfriend, where I'd been looking for a girlfriend, etc. Then, she said that I'd been looking in all the wrong places and that if I wanted a good girl, I should let her know. During this conversation, she also kept trying to grab my hand and so at one point, I made sure to always be holding a handful of mini pretzels in both my hands as a sort of excuse to not be able to hold hands. I can't hold hands if I'm holding pretzels. Logic. Then, finally she says, I like you, OP. I really like you. I'm like, okay? This repeats for a while until she says, Stop saying okay. It makes me feel like you think I'm BSing. Then, she keeps following me around the room and keeps trying to make me dance with her until I leave. Her husband was pretty much always in the same room as us, no more than a few feet away while this was all happening. I thought I was crazy and imagining it all until another friend asked me on the same night as we were leaving, was M trying to hit on you? That was r slash ask reddit and if you like this video then hit that subscribe button because I put out new reddit videos every single day.